Hi and welcome to the character creation course. So there's a couple of things that we need to do first to get set up and that includes enabling some add-ons within Blender and also setting up the interface. So just to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to the mouse inputs and some of the extra features. So if this is your first time using Blender, stay with it. It can be frustrating if you're not familiar with the interface and if you haven't done any basic training in blender before it might be a good idea to have a look on youtube for some beginner tutorials just to get familiar with blender because this can be a little bit more difficult than your normal beginner course okay that's that's all i'd say but otherwise if you are new to blender and you want to want to give this a go go right ahead absolutely but just patience and practice so first off let's come up here to file left click user preferences I'll be using Blender's left select with the mouse. Also, if you have a keyboard that doesn't have a numpad, check the box beside emulate numpad. That way you can use the numbers across the top of your keyboard. Also, if you come up here to add-ons and left click, it's important to put a check mark beside some of these add-ons just to enable certain features in Blender. These are the ones that I have checked for this tutorial. Now I won't be using most of these for this tutorial, but there may be one or two here that that are important. Um, there's one especially important one that you need to check and that's the one down here. And it's the one called Mesh and Loop Tools. Put a check mark here. Any of the rest of them it may be a good idea just for the odd one in case there's something that comes up in Blender that you can't actually follow along with. So with that done, just left select save user settings and just close that down. Okay, and that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope it was easy enough to set up the scene. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hi and welcome. Okay, so in the next couple of videos, I'm just going to quickly go over the Blender interface and I've added these to all of my courses just to give beginners a quick introduction and help them get set up very quickly. So if you've seen these before, you can just skip on past them and continue with the course. Otherwise, just like I said, if you're new to Blender, it's always a good idea just to have a quick introduction. Okay, so when we open up Blender first, we have the splash screen here. Okay, and it tells us what Blender version it is. It also gives us the ability to use, if we're coming from 3ds Max or Maya, to use the keyboard configuration. We also have our recent projects that we've been working on. Okay, and also you have some links over here for credits. You can go to the Blender website or you can go and have a read of the Blender manual. Okay, and just to started in Blender you can just click in to the 3D view here and I just want to quickly go over the different editors in Blender. So this screen here, Blender's default, is made up of five editors okay and the first one, this one here that I'm in, it's, it's the 3D view okay and if we come down here to the corner we can see the header of the 3D view runs across the bottom okay and we have the ability with all editors to change them. So if we click in here, we can change them to any one of these preset up editors. Okay, so for example, if I select the timeline, you can see that we now have a timeline editor running across here. Okay, I'm just gonna switch this back to the 3D view. Okay, and that's very cool because you can just quickly create your own layouts. Okay, so over here on the left-hand side, we have the tool shelf. Okay, and the shortcut key for that is T, so that hides and brings that into view. Okay, so on that you have the different options. So you have a, the different tabs, and you can also add tabs to this in user preferences when you enable some add-ons. Okay, so for example, Archimesh add-on is enabled in user preferences, and it becomes available here. Okay, same with other 
same with some of the other options so same with layer management that becomes available once it's enabled in user preferences okay so i'm not going to go through all of this stuff we'll be going through parts of it during the course a quick overview of what they are really in back in the 3d view if i press n okay this brings up the properties shelf so you have some different information related to different objects in the scene okay so the cube for example the x location can be controlled with the transform transformations here okay the rotation and scale etc okay so again you can you can do that here or you can do that in the 3d view with just by pressing maybe s for scale it's going to right click to snap that back okay and different options so you can add background images if you're doing some modeling down here just put a check mark in there add your images okay if you, you have options for the display okay so grid floor you can switch it on or off here relationship lines that's when you have objects parented to each other and different options become available depending on what you're doing over here okay so again the shortcut key is n just to hide that okay and that's going to do it for this one so thanks for watching goodbye So if we take a look at the second editor, it's the one underneath here, and this is actually the timeline editor. Okay, so I can just drag this up so you can have a better look. Okay, so basically allows you to add keyframes and control animation within the 3D view. Okay, so if I just put the scrubber back to the beginning, you can also hit this back button here. Okay, with the cube selected, I'm just going to press I, and that brings up the insert keyframe menu so I can just choose location rotation which is going to insert a keyframe for the current location and rotation of the cube okay as you can see down here on the timeline a small little yellow line has come in all right if I I'm just going to right click press and hold the right mouse button and just drag the timeline forward maybe to 60 frames okay and just while I'm there, I'm just going to come up to the render tab and you can see that we have the frame rate set to 24 frames a second here. Okay, so that's where that's can be changed from. So this is the 60th frame. Okay, okay, so you can also change the view and to show your seconds. So if I just grab the cube and just drag it forward, maybe over here and over here and press R to rotate and Z to restrict it to the Z axis and just left click. Now if I press I and insert a location rotation, I can snap the timeline back to the beginning and press play. Okay, so you can see you can move the cube with the combination of keyframes and the timeline. You can also remove them by pressing, when you're on it, you can just press Alt-I, delete keyframes, Alt-I and delete keyframes. Okay, you can go back to press N and you can just reset the location to zero, zero. And the same thing with the rotations okay very easy okay and that's going to do it for this one so thanks for watching goodbye the next editor if we come over here this one here is the property editor okay so we have different tabs here so the first one is for render you can set up your image sizes etc okay you can also rearrange these areas down here so if i just select this tab here i can move up an area and reposition it so obviously the most the most used ones you can have close to the top okay very, very handy feature so the next tab then is your render layer so when you're rendering out you can have different layers you can tell blender what to render etc you have some scene settings so we have a camera we can toggle quickly between the different cameras in the scene and rename them etc okay we can also set the the units of measure okay so you have the option of imperial metric or none which is blender units okay so that option there click on metric you have this the world the background so when we're rendering we have a background color okay you have some ambient occlusion setting some environment lighting not too important when you're getting set up first okay we can move along we have object settings so here we have the cube settings okay so the location rotation scale all right and continue along we have a constraints tab and here you can add the different constraints available okay very powerful stuff then we have modifiers again you can quickly add a modifier so for example if i added a subdivision surface to the cube you can see it smooths it so if i up the views 
smooths it even more. Okay, you have different options associated with that. You can just quickly delete that. Okay, you can move on. So you have some object data related to the cube. Okay, so you have shape keys, UV maps, vertex colors, etc. And the next one is the material tab. Okay, so you can add different materials to your object in the scene here. You have textures. We have the ability to add particle effects and finally physics. So you can use this for different simulations. Okay, so very powerful, very cool stuff. But again, like I said, it's not too important when you're beginning. The important thing is just to get used to Blender and start understanding it. Okay, so we come up here to the next editor. So this was the properties editor. So again, like I said, you can switch this editor if you want a different editor here. Okay, so again, I, I could switch to the outliner. Okay, very same as the one that's up here. Okay, but the header actually comes to the bottom. That's the only difference. So I could come back to properties. Okay, and that's going to do it for this one. So thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay, and up here is the outliner. So the outliner lists the different objects in the scene. So we have a cube, we have a camera, which is this object here, and we have a lamp, which is this object here. And the lamp controls the, the lighting in the scene, or some of the lighting. So with the lamp selected, a new tab opens up here on our properties editor. Okay, and that's related to the lamp settings. So the energy, the color, the type of lamp it is, etc. Okay, same with the camera, if I select the camera. So we have options for the camera here. So we have perspective or the graphic or panoramic. Okay, the focal length, the position, the clipping. Okay, again, lots of different features, but very easy to pick them up once you start using them. So up in the outliner, we can rename objects by just double clicking. So for example, I can just rename the cube to maybe object press enter okay so we know how what it is we can quickly get to it okay and that's going to do it for this one so thanks for watching goodbye okay so the next editor is up here is the info editor okay this one here and it runs across the top of the screen so we have the file so you can save open recent user preferences okay all the different options here you have render options, you, ha you have the ability to duplicate the window that you're working on. So it's very handy if you're doing some modeling or animation or whatever. Okay, again, you have a help menu up here, gets you quickly to the manual, report a bug, okay, or the splash screen. Okay, and the next one is the screen layout. Okay, it's, it's currently set to default. So if I just click in here, you have a whole host of different screen layouts, depending on what you want to do with Blender. So you have an animation, you have a compositing. We're currently on the default. There's a game logic. Okay, there's UV image editing for unwrapping, adding materials. There's video editor. Okay, so if I just click the video editor, you can see now we have a different screen layout. So we have a graph editor up here. We have a preview sequencer here and down here we have a sequencer so you can add your video clips your sound combine them and create content okay very powerful very cool feature in blender the vse video sequence editor okay so if we come back to default back to our 3d view layout what we can do is if you want to make a couple of changes to this scene you can just hit the plus sign and you can just rename this then to maybe I'll call this double press enter you can I come over here and hover the mouse on this corner get the little plus sign I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button and just drag across okay that opens up a new editor and in this case it's a it's a 3d view okay so if you had some work you wanted to do with a double view you can use it as your double and when you're finished you can just go back to default so it's very very useful to have that ability to switch between different the different views you've set up okay you can also select this drag down and change 